This is the last part of a 10 point FRQ on the AP Chem exam. It's got a lot in it and it was worth two points, 2% 2 of the AP exam. It talks about lattice enthalpy, breaking ions, dissolution, particle-particle interactions, dissolution process, a lot of words in here. So let's explain the chemistry of this first and even have a couple of demonstrations on it. And then we'll come back to see if what we've learned can allow us to answer the last part of this question easily. Here is a diagram that's been used in a number of AP chemistry exams. It starts off with this diagram of an ionic solid. It could be table salt. My guess this is probably maybe representation of lithium chloride. We got small cations and large anions. It's a, a salt crystal. It doesn't conduct electricity. Nice solid, ionic solid. Here we've got a liquid, most likely a molecular liquid, doesn't conduct electricity. It's just have these molecules randomly arranged. And we drop the salt into the water and it dissolves. And of course, the salt breaks up into its cations and anions, which now can conduct electricity. We start off with two non-conductors of electricity and we get this salt, which has sort of disappeared in our solution. But now we've got a solution that conducts electricity but we're going to be interested in the energy involved in this, the enthalpy, the entropy. But let's watch this experiment done twice by the Berkeley Chem Labs. Two experiments where salt is dropped into water. Or better yet, water is added to salt. Here's our ionic salt. Here's some water, our molecular, and our temperature. Oh, it's moving up. Note the increase in temperature. Yeah, 36. 40. It's getting to be scalding hot right now. Calcium chloride turning into its ions in aqueous solution. 747 joules per gram or 82 kilojoules per mole. That's significant. Here they're doing it again but now we've got ammonium chloride for our ionic solid and we're going to add the water to it and check the temp. So let's add it. Dissolves and exactly the opposite. The temperature is dropping 8, 7, and they haven't even mixed this yet. As they mix this, it's going to drop down. This can be used for a cold pack. This is like instant cold, and they use ammonium nitrate for exactly that. In this case, we've got 26 kilojoules per mole being absorbed as this solution process occurs. So here's a diagram of that process, which you know has got some energy involved in it, and that's what we're going to deal with. We're going to deal with energy because there's an in-between here that we use to try and describe what's happening, and you've got to know about each part of these in-betweens. So let me reveal. Step one, in order for this ionic substance to get here, it's got to break up. That is where we take these ions and separate them. We've got ionic bonds, we separate them. That's an endothermic process. Breaking bonds, you gotta go in there and you gotta just force them apart. You take your kinetic energy and separate them. It's like pulling magnets apart, but of course that increases potential. The other thing to look at is the change in the distribution of matter, our entropy. So. Our enthalpy is endothermic because we're breaking bonds. But at the same time, we're separating these atoms. So we're creating a greater dispersion of matter. So our entropy, the other factor, and you're going to keep, keep track of all of these things, is increasing. We're taking stuff apart. Now, what's the other step? Well, this molecular substance, our liquid, has to make room for these ionic substances so you've got to do some breaking here too. You've got to break some of the intermolecular bonds of this liquid. In the case of those demos, it was water. Water was having its bonds, intermolecular bonds broken up. The ionic was having its bonds broken up. So we're increasing entropy again, but we're also breaking bonds. So this is an endothermic reaction. Both those things had to happen, two endothermics. Then, we form bonds. Notice we now have our, presume our lithium, now stuck to our molecular substance and our 
water stuck to our ions. So in this process, let me reveal it, we have an exothermic process. Exo and exo as we form bonds. And let me bring these up so you can see them. And this one, breaking bonds, endothermic. Breaking bonds, endothermic, and then exo. So what's the net? Well, you saw in those two videos, it could be exo or endo. It depends how big these are. If we really have a lot of exothermic forming these bonds, then that wins. But if the endothermic is bigger, then that wins. So we can have either an endothermic, or ammonium chloride, or exothermic, calcium chloride. We can freeze you or we can boil you as we dissolve this ionic substance into an aqueous solution, our dissolution. All right, next. I'm scrolling up because this is another diagram that's been used. This is a more recent one. These were older, but this is showing up a lot on exams. And they've got our water molecules. This is pretty. They've got their hydrogen bonds. In fact, I, really, they should have drawn them a little bit better, I think, with the hydrogen bonds between the water molecules, the H plus and the O minus. And here they've got sodium chloride, our sodium ions, cations, and anions. Hope you remember those names. And then we've got our final material. Now, they've added something which is more sophisticated in that previous drawing, where they've got the water molecules arranged properly, the positive charge of the water next to the chloride, and the negative of the oxygen next to the sodium. Nicely organized. And they didn't show that in the previous diagram. This is one of the things that they're trying to add in the curriculum. So here we go again. We have our process where we look and take the water molecules and separate them. Endothermic. Same thing. Ionic substance. Endothermic. Notice we take these sodiums and chlorides and they're scattered everywhere. Water molecules scattered everywhere. Then, bam, down here. This is what we don't know. Net exo or endo. For the sodium chloride in the dilute solution, it tends to be a bit marginally exothermic. It's a close call. So here we've got the same diagram, but the same idea. Breaking bonds, endothermic, scattering things. Breaking bonds, scattering things. And then we reform and things get a bit more organized. Well, that's the chemistry that we're talking about that you saw in those two experiments done in the Berkeley chem demos. Now to the problem that precipitated all of this. <laughs> that old chemistry term, precipitated. I like that. Here's the, here's the question. And it's a paragraph. The lattice enthalpy of LiCl is positive. I mean, that's the energy it needs to break up this lithium and chloride ions. Indicating that it takes energy to break the ions apart in LiCl. Yeah, we know that. However, the dissolution of lithium chloride water in water is an exothermic process. This is like the calcium chloride. Heat's generated. They're saying, but how can heat be generated if you're breaking ions? And this is where the question comes in. Identify all the particle-particle interactions that contribute to the exothermic dissolution process. So what, make, what makes this exothermic? For each interaction, include the particles that interact and a specific type of intermolecular force between these particles. All right, I'm going to move up now. And like I said, that was a mouthful. This was really complicated, but this is the heart of the question. This is what you got to answer. You know, hey, I want points. Well, how do you get the points? Identify all the particle-particle interactions that contribute to the exothermic dissolution process being exothermic. So we got to identify the particles. Who's involved? What are the actors? For each interaction, include the particles that interact. So we've got to include particles. What particles are we dealing with? Lithium, chloride, and water. So we've got to identify them. And the specific type of intermolecular force between those particles. Well, the particles will identify. Lithium and water molecules. Chloride and water molecules. Identify the interactions. Yeah, I mean, that's almost, yeah, lithium chloride and water. 
Lithium and water molecules, chloride and water molecules. Guess what? That gives you a point. You get one point. Let me reveal that for identifying the particles. That wasn't that tough. I mean, you didn't have to read this par paragraph. Identify all the particle interactions. Okay. The particles, lithium, chloride, and water. In fact, you could have said that. Lithium ions and water, chloride ions and water. And what makes the exothermic process? This is a tougher one. You had to know that the lithium and chlorides, and they do that with our dipole, our water dipole, forming this, and they call it the ion dipole bond. That's exothermic. That's all you had to say. The type of intermolecular force between these particles. Remember, our intermolecular forces are London dispersion forces, dipole, dipole, hydrogen bonding, and ion dipole. That's an easy one to identify because you got ions and, of course, dipoles. So we get one point for that, and you've got this pretty well taken care of. You've got your two points for this last part of the FRQ, this huge paragraph. And if you know the dissolution process, remember, because there's going to be MC questions on it, and there's going to be FRQ questions on it. It's worth your time, but it makes sense. Okay, that's it. On to your next FRQ.